Hello everyone, my name is Julia Janssen van Rensburg and I'm an eye specialist from Wintuk with a special interest in treating pediatric eye problems. So, to start off with, what is it that you as teacher should notice when you are interacting with your class? A child that struggles to focus will squint their eyes to try and see better. By limiting the amount of light that goes into the eye this way, distant objects will appear clearer. Sometimes, if the focus in one eye is poor, the eye will turn in or out. Often this is due to a refractive or glasses error. We call an eye that turns like this strabismus. If the inside tissues of an eye is not clear, you may notice that one pupil or the black dot in the middle of the eye is not black but a white or milky color. If you were to put yourself into the learner with low vision shoes, what might they be seeing? Often they see a completely out of focus view of their world when they have nearsightedness or sometimes an even more blurry view. A child with double vision will also have difficulty seeing objects. Now let's move on to common causes of low vision in children. Starting at the front of the eye, refractive errors are the most common problem. This is often due to abnormalities of the shape of the eye or the cornea. Moving a bit more into the eye, the lens is another location where problems may arise, typically cataracts. If the eye cannot regulate its pressure, glaucoma can develop. Children can be born with glaucoma or develop it later in life. If a child is born with glaucoma, the affected eye appears larger and the cornea is very hazy. The inner lining of the eye is called the retina and it is from here that what we see is collected and then sent via the nerve to the brain to be interpreted as vision. Refractive problems are very common and fortunately very easy to correct with glasses. The two types of refractive errors that will have the greatest effect on a child's vision is nearsightedness and astigmatism. An optometrist can help to determine the problem and prescribe glasses to correct the child's focus. If an eye is nearsighted, it means that the eyeball is slightly longer than normal and this causes the image of what you are looking at to fall somewhere in the middle of the eye and not on the retina. If the image falls exactly on the retina, your focus will be crystal clear, but if it falls short of the exact spot on the retina, the image will appear very blurry. Basically, what glasses do is to project the image to fall on the exact right spot to see in focus. Glasses cannot make eyes lazy, as many people wrongly believe. On the contrary, if a child needs glasses and does not wear them, it can lead to an eye becoming lazy. Astigmatism is another refractive error that can be corrected with glasses. Here, the cornea is not exactly spher spherical, but more oblong shaped, or not shaped like a soccer ball, but a bit more like a rugby ball. Cataracts are not very common in children, but they do occur and it is very important for these children to see an eye specialist because surgery is usually necessary. Typically with a cataract, the pupil will appear white and if you take a flash photo, you will notice that the normal eye has a red reflex, but the abnormal eye a white reflex. Retinal problems in kids are usually due to either infection like TB or some diseases that can be transmitted from kittens and puppies like toxocariasis and toxoplasmosis if they are not vaccinated and dewormed. Children can also inherit eye problems and they will tell you that other family members have problems with vision too. If a retinal problem occurred during the development of the baby inside the mother's womb, we call it a congenital abnormality. Children with retinal problems typically have difficulty seeing at all distances and glasses will not fully correct their vision. They may show all the other signs previously discussed like squinting, strabismus and a poor red reflex. With certain retinal problems like retinitis pigmentosa, night vision might be especially difficult. 
If a child has retinal infection, it is very important to get it treated with an eye specialist. If the problem is congenital or inherited, he or she may benefit from assistive visual devices like magnifiers or telescopes to help optimize their sight. Some inherited problems like retinitis pigmentosa or other dystrophies can manifest later in life. The child's vision may have been normal for many years only to suddenly start deteriorating. The optic nerve is like the electric cable of a computer. The eye or computer screen may be completely normal, but if the cord is not plugged in or damaged, the screen will not work. Headaches and a restricted field of vision may accompany nerve problems and may be very serious if not treated. A very important warning sign is a child that had straight eyes before and suddenly develops strabismus and double vision. As a teacher, you should be on the lookout for potential nerve problems in any child that had a hard bump to the head. Rather get a doctor's opinion if the child has headaches, nausea or vomiting. A specific eye sign may be that one eye cannot look out. Because of this, the two eyes will not be looking in the same direction and the child will have double vision when looking straight ahead. So to summarize, when should you as a teacher be concerned about a child's vision? All children should see well and if not, need a diagnosis to determine if treatment is possible. Also, it is not normal to suddenly or gradually lose vision. Any other signs like squinting, strabismus or dangerous symptoms accompanying them should raise concern. And don't forget, double vision is always abnormal and needs investigation. Lastly, there are a few issues that may present as low vision but isn't, and it's worthwhile referring these children as well, as these kids may need support in other areas other than eye care. For example, I often see especially primary school children that tell me they can suddenly not see. After examination, where all is normal, it then transpires that a classmate got glasses and they were hoping to con their mom and me into getting a pair themselves. Unhappy circumstances at home or school can also manifest in unusual ways in children. To complain of poor vision or have a medical complaint is occasionally the only way the child can consciously or unconsciously think of to get attention. And then of course, learning or reading problems like dyslexia. It is very important to make sure that low vision is not the culprit, but if vision is normal, other support should be given to these kids. A good teacher cares about a child's education. A great teacher cares about the whole child. I would like to wish you all the best on this very important journey that you are traveling on with your learners every day. May you always be great teachers.